In previous reviews, I stated that I started shooting film back in 2008. I was given my dad's old Canon AE-1, and for the longest time, it was my favorite film camera to shoot with. I think it was mainly the sentimental value and the tactile feel from the camera. It was like no other in my collection at the time. That was until about a year ago, when I bought my Olympus OM-4. I've had a couple of emails and comments from my previous videos stating that my reviews are more like overviews, so in this episode I'm going to skip over all of the history and dive into the details. Why I love this camera. The ergonomics. The camera body is almost an exact copy of the OM-1 and OM-2. This is a good thing. It's small and lightweight but houses a massive bright viewfinder. When coupled with a lens, all the manual adjustments can be completed with one hand. Starting from front to back, you have aperturing, then focus, and finally shutter speed. The depth of field preview button also lives on the lens. All of these controls living on the lens make it incredibly quick to change your settings on the fly. The wind on crank isn't the nicest one that I've used, but it's solid and has a nice action to it. The previously mentioned viewfinder has a diopter and is very easy to check focus. It is also home to an awesome light meter. The light meter. Normally, I like my cameras as simple as possible. The OM4 is my only exception. The light meter in this camera is the most accurate I've ever seen. It features a centre-weighted meter by default, but has the ability to spot meter as well. Now, I know what you're going to say. Big whoop, a spot meter. My top con or OM2 SP can do that. To which I say yes. That's all very well and good, but can it take up to 8 spot meter readings, average them, then store that meter reading in a separate memory bank for later use? No, I didn't think so. Another pro to the light meter is the highlight and shadow function. This will correct your camera's light meter to expose whites as white and blacks as black, as opposed to the mid-grey light meters normally try and achieve. Did I also mention that all of this works in the auto aperture preferred mode? The lenses. If you couldn't tell from my previous Olympus gear videos, I love Suico glass. Fun fact for you, I owned an Olympus 50mm 1.8 before owning an OM camera and I even made a video on it. You can click the little eye up there to see it. I haven't been disappointed with any of the five lenses I own. Some are not as good as others I know, but this hasn't stopped me from collecting and shooting them. Currently, I am still on the lookout for a reasonably priced 85 f2, but I digress. Reviewing the glass is an entirely different video for another day. The cons. The design. When I first saw the OM4, I thought to myself, that is the ugliest looking OM camera I have ever seen. I was originally going to buy an OM1 as my first OM camera because it was the first in the series and it set the bar for what was to come. In my opinion, the OM1 is one of, if not the best looking camera ever created. The OM4 looked far too busy to me. All the buttons lived on top, including the film rewind button. The biggest issue for me though was the great big orange eye in the middle of the pentaprism. Looks like a cyclops. Although I have listed this as a con, I have fallen in love with this camera and the aesthetics do not bother me anymore. In fact, I think I've warmed to it. On a side note, I now think that the OM40 really is the most disgusting OM camera of all time. First of all, the camera can't shoot 6400 ISO or ASA. Alright, it's not a big deal, I'll just use the exposure compensation to trick the camera. Oh. Oh no, you, you can't do that either. Alright, let's do some off-camera flash work. Let's unscrew the PC port and... Oh, no, that's not it. Um, where is it then? Uh, ah, I found it. Right, now, um, where am I supposed to put this without losing it? Alright, here we go. With Olympus's F280 flash gun, the OM4 can sync up to two thousandths of a second. Awesome. Let me set my sync speed and, oh, well that didn't work. The problem with having a sync speed of a 60th is that I find that there is just far too much ambient light creeping into the image. There it is, the perfect image. If I take this shot, I'll be stoked for the rest of the year. Right, let me bring the camera up to my eye and, oh, where's, where's the light meter? Um, Oh, there it is. Oh, oh, and it's gone. The moment's gone. The final downside to this camera is the battery. If you know anything about the OM4, you would have known that this would have come up. The OM4 is notorious for its battery drainage problems. If you don't take the batteries out, 
or forget to leave the camera in bulb mode overnight, your batteries will have completely drained by the morning. This camera is battery dependent, so it will not fire if there is no power. However, you can still shoot in bulb and at sync speed of a 60th. The later OM4TI fixed this problem. Summarizing this camera. I love this camera and I use all of the features on it every time I shoot a roll of film. So the question on your mind is, Jack, when are you going to buy an OM1? And the short answer to that is, I'm not. The OM4 feels like a part of me now. It goes wherever I go. I don't see myself ever selling it on, even if it is to upgrade to an OM3 Ti or an OM4 Ti. I can see past all of its quirks because I have taken most of my favourite images with this camera. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If there's anything that you want me to review in future, just let me know down in the comments down below or send me an email. And on screen at the moment, you can see my latest upload. If you want to watch previous Olympus reviews, you can click on the little eye up there where I've got all of my Olympus related videos listed. Thank you very much for watching and I hope you have a great day.